Rock in like an AK. Rock it in. Okay. And then. Oh, sorry, it's got a little caught up there. There you oh. go. Try, rock it now. It's my first day. Outlaws, what's up? It's Nate here with you. I'm at a cool booth. I think I'm going to have a chance to share some information, a little history with you that's going to dig. Yeah, we're literally the only company left in the world that makes the Fowl. It's an iconic rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's important because it was my police, first police issue rifle in South Africa. So I have a long history with it. I ended up with DS Arms about 22 years ago when I landed in the United States. So basically what we, what's new at SHOT this year, we basically went a little retro. We went to the original G1 uh, with wood furniture. It's fully manufactured in-house at DS Arms. There are no surplus parts on it, it's all in-house manufacture. And this is basically, goes back to the 1950s, original German G1 when it was first introduced. Another thing we found very popular is the Rhodesian type rifle with a paint job. No one is the same, they're all different. Exactly as the Rhodesian army, each soldier got to paint his own rifle. Yeah, so basically what happened, uh, as it evolved, we changed that so that it would launch a grenade. Okay. Or it was changed so it's a grenade launcher too. Mm -hmm. uh, plastic handguards, plastic furniture. So we moved away from the wood, uh, but basically the same rifle. Uh, in the Rhodesian and the South African bush wars, we were allowed to paint our rifles and it would be a brush stroke with a can or somebody would have a spray can. So again, no two are exactly the same. Now it's become kind of collectible. It was originally the service rifle of 93 countries overall. Politically, I think some people, there's been some groups that don't like the whole concept of Rhodesia. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, a lot of people, former Rhodesians come hang out at our booth. And obviously I'm from South Africa myself, so I don't quite see it in the same light. So this was chambered in 308, correct? Yeah, 762 by 51 NATO. Okay, and the heck, 20 round mags? 20 round mag was standard. And then what was the original, what's this original barrel length? Uh, 21 inch barrel length on the originals, pretty much right up until we went to the folding rifles back in the 70s. That dropped it down to just under 18 inches. Okay. So the standard battle rifle configuration was always 21 inches. Coming from how do we fight with this, how do we reload this gun? So the traditional M14 type um, or wherever, you'd use the one hand, rip the mag out, secure it, grab another one, load it in. Right. Uh, so now, so they know, like, you, you shot this to bolt lock, right? Bolt so, lock's back. Yep. So some of the Salute Scouts back in the day and guys that were into guns. Mm -hmm. Once the gun locked back, we'd push forward, mag out, mag in, lock the bolt back, and it would lock right forward. So that's a far quicker way to load a battle rifle and take one out and one at a time. Do you mind if I try? Absolutely. All right. So, so grab, grab it in the hammer grip there. Oh man, yep. so I, I need, I feel like I need a longer finger on this yeah. one. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to push this forward. Ooh. All the way at the bottom. Oh. Push forward, tap Push it. Push forward, knock it out. Yep. Come right here. Rock in like an AK. Rock it in, and then. Oh, sorry, it's got a little caught up there. There you oh. go, Try, rock it now. It's my first day. <laughs> and then I push this right here with my thumb pull to down. send the bolt home. Just pull it down, there you go. You can actually get pretty quick with it if you've spent some time on it. Obviously, it's your first time, so. I'm gonna have to work on that. Now I need to buy one. So what we did in the improved carbine where mm -hmm. we've got an adjustable stock, different grip, Picatinny rail handguard, you'll notice it's very easy for me to press it. And not only that, it's ambidextrous. So we went ambi, and so now we can load easily without you straining your thumb or reaching forward. Okay, and then to send the bolt home, it's still right there? Same, just pop down. Okay. So uh, again, just some little ergonomic improvements, being able to pop it right out like that. If it doesn't drop free, tap it, rock it in, hit the bolt. Professionals train for stress, right? Before speed, make sure you get it right the first time every time and it's a reliable way. Daniel, I feel like you've given us a little bit of history, a little bit of culture with this. 
and it's I really dig seeing how how they did this back in the day. These are these are iconic, and uh, they're 308. Check it out. Yeah, that reload was generally reserved for the special higher operator guys in the average army. Average army, we would just teach them to retain the mag, stick it in your in your belt loop. But we always push the limits, though. Yes. <laughs> Why not? All right. Thanks a lot, man.